You spent a lot of time early in your career in government, and now you lead one of the largest professional organizations in our state. Could you tell us a bit about yourself and some of the experiences that have shaped your career trajectory? Sure. Thank you, John, for that question. So some people know this, but some do not. I actually grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Kansas. And honestly, if you had gone back and asked the high school graduate me what my trajectory would have been, it would be very different than where I am now. I always knew and had an interest in public policy and the law, but I really saw myself as staying in the Midwest, probably going to a large university. My mother was a single mother and we grew up and were very close and she actually said, oh, well, when you're applying for colleges, you should look at some women's colleges up in New England. I said, women's colleges, New England, what are you talking about? But again, as a type A firstborn, you know, people pleaser, I was like, okay, let's apply. Let's do what mom suggests. And I ended up at Mount Holyoke College out in South Hadley. And uh, really that is a major turning point in my story. And certainly how I ended up in Massachusetts and thank goodness I did. But it also really shaped me having that four year experience being with just amazing faculty and really, really smart and strong women leaders that I think set the course I did end up then going, moving a little further east into Boston to go to Northeastern Law School. And again, I credit Northeastern. Uh, the co-op program really allowed me to figure out not just what I wanted to do, but what I didn't want to do when it came to the law. And I was fortunate that my last co-op was actually in the state house, and I caught the public policy bug, as we say, and the rest is history, so to speak. And so for the last uh, better part of uh, 20 years, I've been involved in government affairs, public affairs, advocacy, and now I'm here at AIM, leading an amazing organization.